I do, I do though say whoever is around you and key to you coming up with the ideas to start a company and you start one and, and you and another person have all the stock in the world and those people you were talking to, they were part of your ideas too. Treat them as founders when you can. Because when Apple went public, um, we had a, a few people who were around us in those garage days. They had zero stock and the rest of us at the top were super wealthy. Yeah. And so Steve Jobs turned down giving them any stock from the company. So I took actually $20 million of today's dollars of my own stock and gave it to five people just because they were sitting around the dinner table talking about ideas with us. Make sure you feel that what you're doing is in your heart. It's something you want to do for yourself. You want it as a part of your life or you, somebody that you care very much about. Don't try to think out what would other people need? What could I build for them? Because then you aren't, it's not that personal to you. You know, yeah. you aren't as motivated. So make, make sure that you're really building that you are the market that you understand very well. Don't just go on, other people will be able to use it this way and I'll sell it to them. And once I'm done, I'll go and start something else. Yeah. Try to work on something startups that this is something you're going to put your life in, your heart and soul. And you hope that that company goes on forever and ever for the rest of your life. And, and not just, oh, it's a little step that I'll create yeah. it, I'll sell it, and I'll make an exit. Yep, yes, absolutely. I also say that to come up with ideas, a lot of people nowadays come out of business school and they want to prepare ideas on paper. I have this new idea that nobody's done yet. And can I go raise money? Because you always need some yeah. money to start something. First of all, try to raise, try to go as far as you can with the least amount of money because you'll own more of what you get in the end. Create yes. some working models, whether it's physical hardware or an on the screen, you know, a virtual demonstration of things that people can use to see how it's really going to work with our own muscles using this thing and, and the, you know, our real interaction with it. Try to get that far yourself. Also, if you're only a business person, try to find some real smart techies and look for the type, not that got good grades or something or took the right courses. Look for the ones that have built things in their life, even if they didn't go to college at all. If they built things in their life, they always find a way and whatever education is needed, they can get online or in the old days, we'd say out of books. They're going to they're gonna get the learning done. But you find those kind of people at buildings, they are so clever. They've had to solve problems and make things smaller and tighter. And if they built enough things in their life, they are they have clever uh, approaches. They will think of more ideas than, than you had. Well, you had your idea, what, what we could sell to the public. They will have some good little touches to it, ways to simplify it, make it perfect. Um, yeah. Look for that kind of person that isn't just capable, but is an, art, an artist at what they do. What it is represents themselves and has to has to be beautiful in the eyes of another developer. Well, I measure my success not by business success like Apple Computer and other businesses. I measure it more by happiness in the world. And the biggest important thing to me was I came upon some formulas when I was 20 years old life philosophies that I would be very happy forever. I was also very lucky to be so talented and smart in electronics that I would never worry about a job. You know, most people probably worry a little bit. I've got to have employment. I've got to keep things going. And so that's a lot tougher for them than what I had. Yeah. Um, as far as um, my biggest success or what, what's meant the most to me, mm -hmm. I think representing the fact that an engineer can be a very important person in the world in starting things that go a long ways. You don't have to grow up a businessman, marketing, you don't have to be socialized. You could be a geek and have some ideas and build some devices and really have a great effect. And I stand up for all those other people that are outsiders in school. They're excluded, but they have yeah. brains and they have thinking and they yeah. want to be somewhere, but they it's hard for them to act like they're, they're competent. And I hope I give a lot of those people confidence that they really can, that they really have some value that's going to come out. There are a lot of rules that you would learn in a university business class, a marketing class, that I don't even know yeah. how to tell if a product's marketable. And you could follow those, and they probably have some relevance, just like um, the rules of how, you know, what stocks are going to increase because of what parameters. And very often, sometimes it turns down to you have, if you have a better intuition, if you played with um, um, ideas of products and markets before in your past, yeah. you know, you're not a newcomer doing it for the very first time. At least then you have some better ideas of what works and what doesn't. You have your own rules. Yes. Um, yeah. You should, one of the things is you should be driven by a personal 
desire to use what you're making or a love for it. I love how I'm going to be able to help these people with something they really need. You know, maybe you're building a device that helps, you know, an invalid walk or something like that. Well, that's, you can feel so dear, desperately. I've always, always in my life wanted to help those kind of people. Well, yeah. Help the invalids. If you're not, if you're saying, oh, I just sort of know the marketing. I know that they want it. I know that it will sell. I know the price. I know we'll make money and I'll market it. Well, I'm sorry. You're not the interesting person to the world. You know, and you're not going to create, um, you know, another Apple. Well, when it comes to having no capital and you're starting out, I, I think back to our, our early times at Apple. Obviously, after Apple was successful with one product, it had huge amounts of capital to invest in others. But yes. we started out and we had Steve Jobs and I, we were in our young 20s. We not only had no savings account in a bank, we had no relatives with a bunch of money. Yes. We had... Um, no, and we had no experience in business. We had not taken business courses at a university or anything. We just had our heads and a sense for, you know, where things were going to go. So we decided not to start out. I got to go seek a huge amount of money and be huge. We yeah. decided to actually start our company at a very small level, a few hundred dollars from Steve, a few hundred dollars from me. I yeah. sold my most valuable possession, my Hewlett Packard scientific calculator. And we put this money in and we were going to start out a very small level of business and very quickly, people saw what we had and appreciated it and gave us orders for a higher level of business. Yeah. And we had to start worrying about where do you get the money? We cannot get the money to build a thousand computers. Um, we did have one friend who loaned us $5,000, but mainly we got the parts on credit. That means after the parts are opened up, all the parts that go into your computer, you have 30 days to pay for them. We could build the computers. They were built at a, uh, not 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 in our place. We didn't do any manufacturing yeah, yeah. ourselves. But um, we got them built up, and then we drove them down to a computer store that paid cash. So the computer store owner, Paul Terrell, took the risk. He believed that this was a market that was going to happen, yeah. and he took the cash risk. Really, he was really the key investor <laughs> in a way. It was indirectly, yeah. but but we did. But Steve and I managed to do it with absolutely no money of our own. Now, once we got through a little bit of a level, we slowly, slowly built up a bank account to yes. $10,000. And that would be more money in today's dollars, of course. That was a long time ago. And that was just enough we could say, well, now we can move into this little office building complex. We have enough money to rent an office space, and we have just enough sales to the, the 30 or so stores that there were in the world, yeah. you know, that we could sell our little Apple ones to. We had just enough to keep our business going. So we took tiny, tiny steps. But with, the, with our, our real product, the Apple II, we knew it was so great. It was going to really change the world forever and make this whole industry happen. And that one, we started looking around for some bigger money, enough money yeah. to build a thousand computers, not enough money to build 50 or 100, yeah. enough money to build a thousand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that was a, so much money, we had to start talking money talk. And I, part of my philosophies are engineering, mathematics, scientists, logic, reason. Stay away from finances and money, Steve. <laughs> you know, it's hokey baloney to you. So Steve Jobs had to handle the business ends. Yeah. And he went out pursuing the money in a lot of ways. But we never once, never really, never exceeded um, a, a very large amount of money. One of the things is if you if you go a long ways with very little money, by the time you have something successful, you will own a much higher percentage of it than other people who just want to take money right off the top and then go hire the engineers. That's another idea. I'll get the money and then I'll hire the engineers. No. Include the smart, clever problem solvers from day one in all of your ideas. Include one of them at least. Yeah. One technical person who can actually build what you're dreaming of. Kind of like like in, in life, you can even get married a lot and find out, oh, everything was perfect. It all added up. Yes. We had similar similarities and so many things, and they, they, they went away. So you can't be sure. Um, Steve and I bumped into each other accidentally. We were introduced by a friend who went to the same school. We went to the same high school, okay. Steve and I. We didn't know each other in high school, but we had similar interests, which was digital um, technology and pranks, playing pranks in school, having fun, you know. So we met, and we didn't have extremely identical backgrounds, um, but we had a lot of common interests in philosophies of life and the counterculture thinking that yeah. life could be very different, and music, words by Bob Dylan, you know, became our big thing. So we went to concerts together. So we just stumbled into each other because we were close. Look at Apple Computer. Of the first 10 people in Apple, seven of them were from the same high school. When you're young and starting up and you don't have much money, you yeah. tend to grab people around you that are friends. 
And a lot of them never even worked for Apple. They just what they participated in our thought process, but they didn't have to be paid money or anything at that time. I do, I do though say whoever is around you and key to you coming up with the ideas to start a company and you start one and, and you and another person have all the stock in the world. And those people you were talking to, they were part of your ideas too. Treat them as founders when you can. Because when Apple went public, um, we had a, a few people who were around us in those garage days. They had zero stock and the rest of us at the top were super wealthy. Yeah. And so Steve Jobs turned down giving them any stock from the company. So I took actually $20 million of today's dollars of my own stock and gave it to five people just because they were sitting around the dinner table talking about ideas with us. Yeah. It's, they deserved it. I think of family. I didn't do things for money. I did it for, for the right, for technical reasons, yeah. to build great products. And for the right reasons in life, I do everything. I've always been thinking of technological ideas yeah. and how to increase our computers. And we can get them up to someday when they're just like a smart human talking to you. And someday they might even be smarter than us. I mean, Google is smarter than anybody for searching up information than asking yeah. somebody with a brain. And nowadays, I'm starting to lead me to thinking, if I only had a way, there's no way we can tear down this whole technology world that's starting to become more important than the humans. We live our lives according to what technology there is to get us places, you know, and, and things like self-driving cars are coming, and we're just sort of a passenger in the technology world, and we can't give it up. And if we, because if we gave it up, we don't have an alternative. <music>